Jesus' name. Fresh grace on the ministry. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may have your seat in the presence of the Lord. I need to read this scripture. Revelation chapter 9, 9, Revelation chapter 7, 9 to 10, NKJV. You can give it to me, please. After these things, I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, people, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, with white robes, with lamp, with palm branches on their hands. Let's go to 10. And crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Amen. We are here from all nations, all cultures. We are here on the throne of mercy, celebrating and adoring our God. The Lord, we embrace our praise, our worship in the name of Jesus. I would have loved to see the cultures paraded here. How many of you would agree? That was what I thought we were going to get. Because a Nick would be thinking that, oh my goodness, look at Monica. Is she a, 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 a queen from Zumundu land or something? Because he, she will be trying to figure out which culture. And I see, uh, where is our pastor? Pastor Billy Sheik from Saudi Arabia. You know, and then you see some people, you don't even know which culture. They have three different variations. They have Africa here. They have American here. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I just had to ask um, Sister, uh, Sister Ifi, and she said she's from Eritrea. So I would have loved that to happen so, uh, so that we can actually identify with those cultures and have an understanding, oh, this is how they dress in, in out Nigeria, this is how they dress in, I mean, in India and all that. My grandchildren are dressed as South Africans. It will really have been awesome. So this is what I would like to do. When it's time for us to have our feast of answers, if we can just give people papers to just write their country as they are dancing. So I can say, oh, Pastor Billy is a sheik from Dubai. Oh, um, I mean, look at Mr. and Mrs. Mufong. Oh, my goodness. They are first lady and second, first man and first lady from somewhere in Africa. Wouldn't you think it would be nice? This is exactly what the scripture is saying. He said they came, they all dressed up. In different cultures, God is looking at me, and I can just see God having goose pimples, saying, my goodness, this is what I've created. And also to give our, peop, our, our e, e, uh, members the opportunity to see the flavor in the house. How many of you agree? Praise the Lord. So if you can do that, that would be awesome. We'd like to know where you are. As you're dancing, just, you know, just shake and say, you know what, I'm from here. I'm from this town. That would help a lot. And then we'll get better. We can only get better um, next year. Amen. And God will keep us, if he tarries, to have greater times in 2020, 23 in Jesus' name. My own only concern is that how we're going to be able to call all the countries that will be here because we'll have quadrupled by next year. Every continent will be represented in this house by next year. So I'm just talking to the team, whoever the team may be, start thinking of how we can be very um, innovative in how we can experience every culture. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity again to come to your feet, to be fed of you. Father, Lord Almighty God, we thank you because every time we come to this place, we are fed. We are fed with words that give us the empowerment to be able to face the world, to be able to accomplish your divine plan and purpose. Today, let today not be any, uh, any different, O oh Lord. Father, Lord Almighty, Speak to that need that we need to be filled in. As our faces are different, what we need to hear are different. Our place spiritually, physically, emotionally, financially are different. But you are more than able to meet everyone's need anyway. King of glory, Jehovah, let this word meet us where we need it to meet us. So that we can be better than how we came in Jesus' name. Thank you, everlasting Father, for your word. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. This month, the Lord spoke to us that it's a month to enlarge warfare. As a matter of fact, I've been having so much, um, my mind is going a thousand miles a minute because things are seen when God floods you with words. You don't know which one 
to re- I don't know which one to really focus on, but when you think about it, everything ties together. The 21 days fast, the Lord says, a season of grace. And that we are working in a dimension where things will start operating in a way that you know it is not your ability that you are accomplishing these things. And he gave us the word that he, the word that our season of pain, disappointment is over. And we are excited. And then he said, we should just praise me for another 21 days. Let me tell you something. You cannot praise God for 42 days. You cannot seek him for 42 days and expect your life to be different. I want to assure somebody who is under the sound of my voice that it may not show physically that there is a change. But I can assure you in the spiritual realm, there has been a shift of God. There has been a change of God's for you. The Lord is working for you this year and going forward in Jesus' name. So when you have to tie that to one God saying there is a, large, a time to enlarge in warfare and a season of grace, I am looking at it for me that, Lord, I thank you because you know that the season I'm going to is a season of elevation and enlargement. And you know, they always say something, when um, the larger your wealth or your success, the larger the enemies you are fighting. How many of you know that? You cannot be a lightweight boxer or a wrestler or whatever and decide to fight a heavyweight one. You will be knocked down. So God is saying that, you know what? I've empowered you with grace to be able to confront those things you have not been able to confront in the past. And I've prepared you for a time like this. So without fail, you cannot fail anymore. The scripture God gave us in 1 Peter 5, 10, he said that those times are over. The times of pain, the time of disappointment, the time of shame, the time of delay, the time of barrenness is over. I'm taking you through a journey that I will be myself, that will empower you to fight all the Goliath in your life. Amen. So when you look at the scripture the Lord gave us in Psalm 18, 34, he says, he teaches my hand to make war. That means that he will teach you. He will teach you. I'm telling someone, the Lord will teach you how to confront your battles. The season of timidity is over. The season of fearful, being fearful is over. You are an overcomer in Christ Jesus because he loves you. You are an overcomer. It sounds like you are hearing words, but I want you to just absorb it. Even if your heart cannot take it, let your head absorb it. That there is no, no matter how difficult, how impossible, how the Lord says concerning you. The Lord says at the end of the day, you are going to come out laughing in the name of Jesus. He says, so it will not be me. It will not be you fighting the battle. But I would maneuver you through that journey in the name of Jesus. So I want it to be a, a, a season of encouragement. And I just appreciate the, I think it's Pastor Naomi that says that. This season of feasting, can, we cannot afford it to be over. Because you have to be in a perpetual place that I have overcome. I have overcome. Thank you, Jesus. For the things that look impossible. Why? Because the Lord Almighty, before this day came, he has already settled it. Being in that p- mindset of answered prayers puts you in the mindset of expectation. Let me say it again. The mindset of answered prayer is putting you in the mindset of expectation. Truly, let me tell you something. Some people are prayer machine. They don't, you cannot, you, you can't even compete with them when they pray. They, they, they thrive in being in a place of cabin. But you know what? It is just emotion. In their heart, that thing they are looking for, they've already forgotten it. They are like the Shunammite woman. Forget it. I can't have children anymore. But they will serve God anyway. So many people are not experiencing the best of God, the impossibilities, the miracles, the signs, the wonders. Even though they have the tools to be able to confront the devil, but they can't because it has become that emotion. I pray by the message of God that you will not lose sight of the fact that you still serve a God that answers prayer. He hears and he will answer your prayer. I'm telling you, God will hear and answer your prayer. This season, things are shifting. In the spiritual land, the gods have changed. The enemy is no longer in charge of your destiny. God has taken it over, regardless of how impossible it is. Except you don't believe it. If God truly, I always say, God, you know, I don't know what to believe, but if truly that Red Sea, because I went to the Red Sea myself, this thing, this water parted, ah, then there's nothing I have that God cannot do. And our God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So the Lord Almighty is speaking to us because he wants us to be in that place where we are going to fight. The message last week was, I believe it's a season, or is a a grace to overcome. Yes, overcoming grace. Thank you. 
And we were very clear. And I just want to just take, I'm not preaching his message again, but I want to take it to another dimension. When he spoke last week, he was using specifically the scripture. I believe it is it's in Ephesians. Uh, is it, I thought it's 13 to 18. Yeah, he said, uh, must wear the armor of God, blah, 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 and all that. I don't want to preach that message again because the Lord has spoken clearly. And he showed us that these are the weapons of our warfare. The things we must have, the things we must use to be able to. And we started during the 21 days fast to be able to utilize those as working in truth, being in prayer. You understand? Standing in righteousness. All these things are in this scripture. And you can go back and look at this in Ephesians. I believe it says starts from 10 to 18. Just go there and read it. The Lord has spoken. But there is a dimension of this warfare that we don't often pay attention to. But we need to pay attention to now more so than ever. Because the enemy is, the enemy is, is one that fights you. Not physically, but he fights you spiritually. The Bible, Bible already declared that our weapon of warfare is not carnal. It is not the insults that you render on the devil. It is not the, uh, be careful, no, be careful. I'm warning you that the devil is not intimidated by those things. It is not your crying and your sobbing and crying and sobbing that I've prayed about that it doesn't intimidate the devil. If the devil can confront Jesus eyeball to eyeball, despite the fact that he knows he's a God that came on earth, and he was not intimidated to face him well by eye, eyeball to eyeball. Knowing that he has a great destiny to fulfill, you are not exempted. And God has brought us to a place to let you know that. I'm looking at all this diversity and culture that <laughs> you, even though you may be unique, you may be different from everyone else. To God, you are, to God, you are, you are, you are, you are to him one. They might think you are different. To God, you are special. And therefore, everything God has made available in the heavenly places belongs to you. So it's not a matter of, it's only white people that have children quickly. It is those who are short that can get pregnant. It is those who are tall, those who are come from Arabia. They are the wealthiest in the whole world. Do you know there are some people that believe that certain culture are privileged with certain blessings? That is not God. Every heavenly blessing belongs to me and you. So this morning, I just want to just share with you a few things that we need to understand. That even as we know the weapons that God, used, God has provided us to fight the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus. All those different things that we know to, to, to be able to overcome in the place of prayer, in the place of fasting, in the place of thanksgiving, in the place of gratitude. Those weapons, those are weapons that we use to fight. But I want you to understand what the devil used to fight because those are the ones we don't pay attention to. As you go out there, the enemy is constantly Bro, you found Jesus. So you are not going to be exempted. One of the things I want you to understand, the secret for you to know, that one of the things that the devil uses when you live here to be very discerning is the fact that the enemy will bring this discouragement. Say discouragement. That is his own weapon. His own weapon. You will not see something fly and say, fear, I saw one arrow and just came. No, the enemy does not have to be dramatic. He uses those subtle things that we don't pay attention to. And those things are deflator of grace. They are deflator of what? Grace. They are deflator of faith. Discouragement is one. First Peter 5 8 says, Stay alert. Watch out for this in NLT. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He's crawling to and fro, back and forth, looking for who he will devour. The enemy wants to discourage you. The enemy wants to remove courage from you. When he had discourage, he wants to take courage out of your life. What did God say to Joshua? He said, Joshua, I know that this position you are taking is intimidating. I don't know where you are right now. You are taking this exam. Maybe you are making only $20 an hour. But you know when you finish this exam, you pass it. You'll be going from 20 to 75. I don't know about you. For me, that's intimidating. Is it possible? How shall it be? Release it true. But the enemy will now take the this and make sure the courage 
add the this to the courage and you will deplete you. You are taking the exam, you are passing the exam, but you cannot go through and, and, and do well in interview. Why? It is not you don't have the content, but you yourself have already disqualified you. I spoke to somebody and they said they have this fantastic credit. I said, how many certifications do you need, sir? Abba. Is it AWS? And that is cloud. Is it this? Is it that? They have so many certifications, you can't get a job. Why can't you get a job? But you know why they cannot get a job? Even though they have the content, but they cannot deliver what they have in them. They, don't, they cannot express their content because the spirit of timidity and the fact that they have always failed is killing them. In the name of Jesus, discouragement will not kill you. God had to encourage Joshua himself. He said, Joshua, you are taking on something that your superior was not able to. You may be taking on something that those you know have taken the exam and not passed, they are taking it on. But everybody can fail. You will not fail. Amen. Minus you. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know people here who took the exam first time, second time, third time. They gave testimony fourth time, fifth time, sixth time. You cannot, yes, seven times. Am I wrong in this house? In this house. But they eventually pass. Why in this house we do not give up? Amen. We cannot be discouraged. The day you get discouraged, that is the, the enemy has won the battle. And that's what the enemy is. So as you are living here, I don't know what you are going to confront. Maybe it is your rent that you hope that after this praise and worship, that rent will be paid. And you get home and it's still not paid. Praise the Lord. One thing is that you will not be homeless. You know, after you do this 21 days, you know you are going to pass the exam. You get there, you fail the exam. Praise the Lord because you have shown me another way to pass the exam. I cannot be discouraged. Tell yourself I cannot be discouraged. The second thing the enemy uses, because this is no weapon. We have known about the one God has given down to us. And we seem to be able to handle that pretty well. And if you don't, I beg you by the mercies of God, you will be a, you will be a mean smith in the hand of the devil. If you don't know how to use the weapon, God has made easily available to you. That is why he says that he will, what he will teach you. And the teaching is in the word. He said, I will teach you. Because every battle requires a different strategy. You can't say this is how Pastor Abby had do this. She went on 21 days fast. She went on the mountain. She didn't drink water and she didn't eat food. If you go and do the same, you might faint on the mountain. Because that is what God gave me. But one thing I want you to know is that as you do what you are supposed to do, also know that the enemy is ready to counteract what you want to do. What you want to do, what you are planning to do. Second one is the vision. Say vision. Ecclesiastes 4.9. <laughs> two people are better off than one for they can help each other to succeed brethren you know what i've found out when couples start they just got married they have great plans then maybe one is getting more successful than the other maybe it is the wife first or the husband's first and then you will start dropping things in your relationship and you would think that, ah, it's because she has money now. Oh, it's because I'm doing better now. And then the enemy will bring all sorts of things in it. Why? All idea of the enemy is to make sure that when you guys don't see eye to eye anymore, that home is crumbled. We all know that home. I'm telling you, these are the things that you don't know that that is his own weapon of warfare. When disunity is in your home, when disunity is in the church, when disunity is with your children, when you cannot see eye to eye, when you cannot forgive, even among families. A brother is doing better than a sister. You understand what I'm saying? The enemy is saying that she's pride. All of a sudden, you see pride. Meanwhile, the enemy has to deposit that in you. Why? Because together you can be one. We know the story about the Tower of Babel. I believe it's in Genesis chapter 11 or so. When the Lord said everybody was in one nation, one language they spoke. And the Lord said because they agreed. Oh, brother, I want to talk to married people in this house. The worst thing you can do as a wife is not carry your husband around. Can do for as a husband is not carry your wife husband and I know there are men here, there's some women here, they don't even know how much it's like they are men. Yeah. Somebody told me, but I don't because it is is culturally influenced. That is the biggest I can assure you. You may be going far, but you are not going far. You may think you are going far. Because the Bible is clear, two can only do, go, go more higher. I can tell you stories, and I've said it here before. I don't know why I'm staying on this, because 
when the money starts coming, there is this sense of that the enemy brings. It's in, it's in it in us. It's greed. Self-centeredness. It is my, I earned it. You weren't there when I was, I was, I didn't sleep for two hours for the past three months. And there is this self thing that comes in you. Brethren, if you do not want the enemy to crumble your home, crumble your family, I beg you by the message of word. If you cannot confide and be one with your wife and all, I don't know why you are married. Then you need to go back to the drawing board and ask whether, I'm not saying you should leave your husband, no. I don't say you should leave your wife, because after this, they say pastor is encouraging it, because I've heard it before, that pastor is encouraging. I'm not encouraging. What I'm trying to say is that there are certain fundamentals that even if you think you are successful, you don't know what success means. Because if you are making six figures, without your smart wife that you are not consulting, you will get to seven figures quicker, because you think she's dumb. I'll tell you something, and I've said it before, and I mean, if that's what I stop here, then, I, then God has accomplished the work. And I say it over and over again, over and over again. When I started working, I, didn't, I, could not, I was making more than my husband, and I would not tell him how much I was making. Until my life was. As a matter of fact, my mom is hearing now, she's watching right now. She told me that in her culture, ah, king lori oko. I wish somebody could translate that. We don't have the grace to be blessed and be married. She told me, and she saw my checkbook with my husband's name. She said, Dimbola, don't do it. I said, mommy, I didn't know the Lord. I said, that will not be my case. When I started, my husband told me that we should keep my salary because I was making more, and he was a taxi driver from here to this year. This year, you, uh, uh, witness, they drive taxi this year, and he was taking his CPA exam. What is the, what is the bacon was something school Baker Baker school thank you my husband I, I agreed with him when everybody was driving I was driving Fairmont how many of you know Fairmont you know my Fairmont it's so big and then my uncle left another car I shop at Salvation Army on 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 Kennyworth it is close to yes thank you Kennyworth and I'll miss because my daughter like this mouth is big so we'll go to Walmart no it's like it's not Walmart then it's Wuko and Ames. So we'll buy two, three outfits, and I mix it with that, and then hang it together and show it to light. If not, the whole Cooper Lane Elementary School will know that it was from Walmart. Ma, I'm telling you, you don't, I want you to hear me well. I did this just because I gave my life to Christ. Maybe because I just became, I was vulnerable, and I said, Lord, I will do what you need to do. We kept one year, and people know here. My brother is here, so, so there is no need to go far. One year I kept my money. The opportunity came for him when he was doing his business, working for a, a company, and they were talking about the he was the financial, whatever. And they were saying they were going to get rid of some gas station that um, somebody died there and they just want to fling it. And after the meeting, he went to the CEO and said, I can buy it. The man laughed. He said, How much do you want for it? I think they said they want 26,000 then, maybe 45 years ago. He said, I can buy it. They laughed. He said, You have 26,000? We bought it with the money we kept for one year. And that was how we started. Boom, 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 boom. I, that was working, I didn't have to work anymore. I'm telling you, two is better than one. Please, two is better than one. Please, husband, love your wife enough to trust your wife. Wife, trust your husband enough to, there's no point. Why? It is not a marriage. I'm telling you, it's not. It is not a marriage. If you guys are not one, it's not. Because God cannot be in it. It's not possible. Because God works, God works with unity. Thank you. Number three, doubt. The enemy will cause you to doubt. I'm looking at my time. I'm looking at my time. The enemy will cause you to doubt. And we're saying this thing because these are the things that you wonder why our prayers are not answered. You see, let me tell you something. Where there is, where there is, where there is mistrust, the Lord cannot single-handedly give something that belongs to both of you to one person. Because he doesn't trust you're going to give your wife. Ma, he, just, he can't trust. God is not a, he's, he's a mathematician. God is not stupid. He might give you something. You see, the problem we have, we are doing okay. That's the problem we have, the problem, sir. We are doing okay. We are doing so okay because where you came from, 
You never thought in your life you get a $105 job. And God will say, only if you know. Only, and that's what happened to me. I am a living witness. That one gas station got us 15 gas stations. One gave us 15. And God can do better for you. Please, marry your friend. And if you are married already, let your wife or your husband be your friend. Not your, not your party friends. Not your drinking friends. Not your body sisters that you gossip on the phone about each other's husband. I know what I'm talking about. And you come to church all dressed looking so cute. The Lord knows. I don't, don't know. I beg that you will talk, we, that will change in this house. And we'll see couples blossoming as if, like what is going on? Like Kilo Day. <laughs> Why? Because God is in it. The next thing is doubt. James 1, 6 said, but you must, ma you must ask with, for wisdom. I'm reading in Amplified. James 1, 6. But he must ask for wisdom and faith without doubting God's willingness to help. You cannot doubt God's willingness to help. For the one who doubts is like a billowing surge of the sea that is blown about tossed and tossed by the wind. Brethren, if you pray and you ask God and you are, and because of the things you see, just as Peter saw, Peter was okay until he looked at the issue. Yes, you cannot go away from the issue because you may live in the issue. But I always say something to myself when things happen. I said, Bimbola, and I'm saying, I said, Bimbola, you can't listen to your heart. I can't listen to my heart. I can't listen to my, I keep saying, I can't, because I'm afraid. I can't listen, but I have to listen to the word. And what is in the word? What I have in my head. So if you don't have the word, you, I'm literally telling you what I do. I can't, I can't, I can't have, I'll be screaming. I can't listen to what, because if I'm trembling. I have to listen to what the word of God says. The word of God says, says so, so, and so, and so, and so. The word of God, and I'll be telling God what the word of God says until that thing comes. Because what do I have? If not, the, I will look at the storm. And once you look at the storm, the battle is over. He has won. The enemy will not win in the name of Jesus. I want us to remember those things he's done for us in the past. Those tight corners, those embarrassing situations, that, that near to death experience that you've gone through, which God could allow you to die just like that. But he spared you. That same God that spared you then will spare you from this calamity. We spare you from that shame. We stay, even if they say there is no way, the law of the land does not, cannot help you. M medical science cannot help you. Um, whatever cannot help you. We serve a God that can help you. We cannot afford to lose sight. So, because what is out there is terrible. For what you are looking for, the enemy is waiting for you toe to toe. So you have to be ready for the devil toe to toe. I will not back down. Even if I die... Asking for that thing. Esther said, if I perish, I perish. Die believing God. Tell your neighbor, die believing God. Ah, you will not compromise. You will not go shortcut. Because you are trying to help God. Because you are doubting God. That was what Sarah and Abraham did. And look at us today. Because Sarah doubted God. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Number four that I'm going to say is discontentment. We are never satisfied. Hmm. Pastor Abby has been changing our clothes every day. Oh, this is not the same God. <laughs> Look at Sister Oyin, my goodness. Since she got married, Sister Oyin Gila, since she got married, if you greet her once, she will hardly answer. Rise up and say amen. I'm speaking. <laughs> since she married, if we greet her like this, she'll just hire us on one kind. You don't know that she, she's enjoying life. Do you understand what I'm saying? Contentment. Scripture says in Jude 16, it says that these people are always complaining. This is in Passion Translation. You will not complain. God, nothing that God does, you remember. Once you didn't have paper, and you were working, washing cars, once you didn't have paper, some people were donating to give you clothes, food, and everything. 
But now you have papers. But you may not be doing the job you like. But the potential to get a better job, because the key to getting is to have a validity to work, you are still complaining. I want you to go on there and just and say, Lord, forgive me. You want a child. God has given you a child. But you are waiting for another one, two, three, four years. But you have forgotten that this one, you cried with so before you have it. And you are making some groans and say, ah, oh Lord, why? Say, God, forgive me. The Lord will help us. Because I'm included, it's not just you. It says that these people are always complaining, never satisfied. Finding faults with everyone, everything. Nothing is right. They follow their own evil desires and their mouth speaks scandalous things. They enjoy using seductive flattery to manipulate others. You will not be a manipulator. Let me tell you something. Discontentment comes from the spirit of pride. Pride and arrogance. Ah, big me. Ah, ah. I'm 40. By now, I've had my yard. And look at that person that is on Instagram. And you know, what? Well, social media does not help. You see them kissing and then next day they've killed him. He's killed his wife. He's thrown the wife out of the door. He's ah, from where to where? <laughs> People do Instagram, Instagram feed just to, to excite you. Thank God. And you look at their marriage. You look at their wedding. You even look at the way they did their wedding. Yay. Didn't this wedding cost like 70 million dollars, Naira? And yours only cost maybe you humble 2,500. And you are and saying that I'm, I'm going to do a renewal of vows. I have to repeat this thing. <laughs> Why? Let me tell you, I'm still talking and you are laughing. If this is your own peak, let me tell you something. These are deflators of grace. God cannot put you a, a, a major thing in your custody if you are never satisfied. If God gives you a billion, you will not be satisfied. If God gives you a position to be before, you can never be satisfied because that seed is still there. Say, like, okay, Lord, just give me that. Let me just win that Powerball. I'm be okay. It's a lie. You will win the Powerball. I'm not encouraging Powerball, though. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just trying to say the things that we use, people will aspire for. If you have that seed of discontentment in you, you can never be satisfied. It is the seed that is in the devil. That brought him from heaven to the earth. He's never content. He saw the glory. He got the splendor. And he was supposed to be the, the most affluent, beautiful angel. Nobody was like him. And yet, he decided to envy his God. Ah, say God forbid. Say every seed of discontentment in me. You are, other people are getting successful and you are looking at, all, all of a sudden you see all the bad things they do. If they greet you somehow, you say it's because they have money. If they greet you somehow, it's because they just got married. I'm telling you, and it is not you. It is how, this is what the devil uses. He already knows you have that seed. Because you have this contentment anyway, it will ignite it for you. Ah, you are, you are an envy person, envious person anyway. Let me just ignite a sham. And you just take it, you grab it. If you don't envy people, if he says it to you, just you'll be say, you, you won't even, it will not be tempted with it. Does that make sense? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Distraction. I'm going to stop in that. I'll stop in that. I have seven, but I'll start a distraction. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 7:35. And this I say to you, I, this I say for your own profit. This is in NKJV. 1 Corinthians 7:35. And this I say for your own profit. Not that I have, not that I may put a leash on you, but for what is pro proper, and that you may serve the Lord without distraction. And in Scripture, Romans 12, to his, that do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the power of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When we look at the things the world do, you will be what will be distracted. Look at the juices. I came to this country five years ago. So, so I came to this country six months ago buying a house. My sister, my brother, my children, what do I always say in this church? It is what? Turn. Please give me five. This is, he listens. Talk knuckle. It's turn by 
tongue. Tell your neighbor it's turn by turn. Without fail, you will have your child. Without fail, you will buy your house. Without fail, you get that six-figure job. Without fail, you get the anointing and the grace of God will manifest in you. Without fail, it's turn by turn. Abba, our God is not an unfair God. And let me tell you something, some good news. There's still more in heaven where it came from. How can you give this man one billion dollars? What else is left in heaven? That's how we think, oh. How can this young man, Ayomi, come buy seven houses in one day? Abba, what is left? Do you know that's how we think? And we start envying, not knowing that there is more. Where is what? <laughs> the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The Lord will help us. Don't let the enemy deceive you. He deceived, he deceived Adam, uh, Adam and Eve. And we know what the result is, is sin. When sin creeps in, <laughs> the war is over. The enemy has won. Amen? The same thing the enemy did, he came to, he came to Jesus. He was going to put, put an end to what he came for. He left his throne, came on earth, and easily wanted, after 40 days, getting ready to go and do the ministry God has called him. He said, ah, let me reward him. Let me tell you something. The enemy is waiting with all these different scenarios to bring you down. I want you to be spiritually sensitive. I want you to be very discerning. The prayer I pray for you this morning is that, Lord, you open your eyes of understanding to be able to see beyond your physical, to be able to hear beyond your ordinary, to be able to see the traps the enemy has set. It's not a matter of if. There are traps all over the place. At your work, with your children. It will use your children against you. It will use your spouse against you. It will use your sibling against you. It will use your parents against you. I told you what my mom said. My mom said, don't give, and I know how my mom, she loves me from moon back. She said, don't do it, because she knows what happened to her. She knows what happened to her mother. God knows what happened to her mother's mother. She has seen the trend, cycle of thing. But I said, my nurse, me, I detached myself from that lineage. I am going to be married. I am going to have a wonderful home, and my husband and I will be faithful. And that is how it has been. Why? Because I chose to believe God, not what the world is saying. I pray by the message of God that we are going to live here with a mindset change. There are so many things that need to change because God has already given us victory already. And the weapon we need to use, we already have it. And we are using it already. But don't let the enemy now use his weapon against us. Let's rise to our feet. Brethren, one of the ways that I, I can assure you that you can walk in that revelation of the word is to surely know that you are truly a child of God. You cannot use a weapon that you have not been taught to use. You cannot fight an enemy that you are on the same camp. You understand what I mean? You cannot fight your en the enemy that you are on the same camp except the Lord use you to kill yourself because any time you are two enemies, they will fight and they will ruin each other. That will not be your portion. You are here today. You know that your relationship with God has dwindled away. Maybe because, you are, maybe because of the season of life you have. You have not been studying the word to empower you recently. Because you are busy studying for your exam. You are busy you know, getting a new job and getting acclimatized to this country. And your time with him has been... A little, it has dwindled a little bit. This is a day to restore yourself back to the one who is your Alpha and the Omega. The one who will ensure that you do not fall into the trap that the enemy has. They call it BB traps. It has, it, it, they're all over the place. At work, at home, everywhere. The enemy has put that there. Because his job is to kill, to steal, to destroy. But you cannot see them except you are working with the one who can show them to you. Please, if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, this is a point, this is an opportunity for you to write, raise up your hand and we'll pray. And if you don't say, Lord, I'm started with that, myself and God, we are one. Then maybe you have been living, you have been distracted. Maybe you have a little bit of discontentment because certain things you've prayed for so long and nothing is happening. And you are in a place where you want to give up. Meanwhile, God is saying that still have that, that, that feast of answers and that level of, of expectation that I will still do it. And you're in that place. I want you to just bow down your heads and talk to God. I said, Lord, and be honest with him. He's our father. Lord, I'm not in that place that I'm really feeling you right now. 
I feel like I'm running alone. I'm walking alone. Maybe my wife is not, is not cooperating with me. My husband is not cooperating with me. My children are not cooperating with me. At work, I'm there completely. And I feel like, you know what? What is, what is the point? Lord, I return to you because I know that from this day forward, you will be the one that will teach me to war. I need your divine assistance. I need your divine direction. Speak to God personally. There are certain areas of life that you know you are weak. You know that, you know what? You get easily distracted. You are not a contented person. As it, it, striving for success is different from being discontent. There are some people, even if they give them the world, they are not content. There is always something else they want to get that they don't have. That is not what I'm taking. Aspiring to be the best version of yourself is not what I'm saying. But you know deep in you that you always like what the Josephs have. You always like what somebody else has. The grace of another person has. The anointing somebody else has. Lord, kill this seed in me. It is not good. Spirit of envy, spirit of pride. Kill it in me, Lord. These are the weapons the enemy is using. Not allow your grace to be manifested in full in my life. Lord, help me. Oh, Father, Lord Almighty God, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You may have your seat, and we're going to pray one more prayer, but before we go. Um, many of us, we come to church, we sit down. We come to church, we sit down, we are blessed. But one of the things that God may be requiring from you is that God needs you. He needs you to work for him. Some of you, I have people here who are already pastors, but they will never even disclose their pastors. They are ministers, they are not going to disclose because of their past experiences. But the Lord has always spoken to us that we should forget the old things, that he has started a new thing in our lives. We are looking for people to walk in the house of the Lord. You know, some of us are weared out because people are not coming forward to do the work of God. People are not, they don't want to pay the price it takes. I want to, I want to admonish you, I want to appeal to you that if you, if you have not done anything, you are not doing anything in this house, we need your help. I want you to rise to your feet right now and say, Lord, you know what? To the extent of what I can do, I want to be a part of this house. I want to help support. We need people in ushering. We need people in discipleship. We need people in children's church. We need people in the lab. We need people in the choir. We need people in, in, in so many departments. The Lord needs you. And I know some, God is nudging your heart right now. I want you to rise to your feet. I want, yeah, we need people. Yes, maintenance. We need people to help us maintain. When things happen, you see Pastor Niyi, Pastor Elder Banks climbing. We don't want him to fall the rail. They can, they, don't fall. They, I mean, and you are there, you are stronger than Elder Banks. You can do it. If you're not working in the house and you want to be a part of us, we really appreciate you. Could you rise to your feet? Thank you. Let us celebrate, Brother Maya. Uh, let us celebrate. Let's celebrate. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. God will help you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So much. could you just celebrate them? I don't know why I want, I, please, let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate. You know you have a gift. You know that God can use you. And to the extent of what you will do, you can do, we will work with you. We are not a taskmaster in this church. And if you have been coming here for a while, you will sense it. It's a spirit that you will sense. There is no, there is no cajoling about it. Please, brethren, no, keep standing. I don't want you to feel that you are being forced to do this. It is for your maker, it's for your redeemer. And the Lord Almighty that has caused you to rise up will not disappoint you. Every service you serve in this house, you, the Lord Almighty, remember it for righteousness for you in Jesus' name. So please, could you just give them, um, could you just write their names so that they can speak to Pastor Richard and uh, we can tell you the process to become a worker. And I can assure you that things will change in a dimension you've never seen before because you have decided to give of yourself to the house because we need help. Thank you. Let us just stretch forth our hands to these ones and just talk to the Lord. That Lord, even as they have taken the bold step to be a part of this house to help, that the Lord Almighty will remember their seed. That the grace to be able to serve God acceptably, the Lord will give unto them. They will not see shame. They will not be disappointed in the name of Jesus. And the reward of service will be their portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may have your seed. And my final prayer, Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. Thank you, King of Glory, because indeed, as we have heard, that our season to feast, our feast of answers has just begun. Father, Lord Almighty God, we're leaving this place celebrating, jubilating, because all that we have requested, you have exceeded our expectation. Father, Lord, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that the enemy may want to cheat, 
to steal, to kill, to destroy because of the seed that is not of God that may still be in them. Today, Father Lord, by your mercy, we kill every seed that may be in our lives that is a hindrance to your grace in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, as we walk with you, as we journey with you in the word, the word of, the word of God will heal every pain. The word of God will destroy every seed. The word of God will enlighten in the name of Jesus for us to be that which you have called us to be. Indeed, at the end of this year, everyone under the sound of my voice will be able to say, yes, this year is indeed my year of enlargement. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen.